The IPO diagram is the second design tool that we'll be looking at in software design development. The purpose of this tool is that we're going to identify any inputs, processes and outputs that will be used in the design of the program. This IPO diagram is probably the most important tool for our future design tools such as the context and data flow diagrams. I suggest that you design this tool first before proceeding with any other design steps. So the IPO diagram is quite simple. It's a three column table with the headings input, process and output. You can see here I've got an example for a fixed speed camera, which was what we used in the previous video and we'll be using in all the other future design videos. What you need to do first is you should always des design a tool around the processes. So if you don't know what the processes are, the processes are basically something that takes at least one input and then converts it into something meaningful such as an output. That output could be either information in the form of data or it could be a Boolean or flag, which we'll talk about soon. So if you work for an example, the first thing that this system needs to do is it needs to detect the time of day because we have the three different types of times. We had the normal school zone and special, such as double demerits. So time of day is an input. Now it's really important to understand that an input has to be something that can be measured. So we're talking about something like time, strings, integers, Boolean, some data type. A button click is an event. So please don't put anything like button clicks or anything into the inputs. It has to be something that can be measured as a data type. So time of day is our input. Our process is detect time of day. Now, please make sure that you name the process something meaningful. It's always good to start off with a verb, an action word. So that way you make sure that it has some sort of description. Uh, you might see examples in textbooks where they have like full sentences for processes to describe. That's okay. I always recommend to my students that you keep it as succinct as possible. So the detect time of day is pretty obvious. And then the output is we have a flag, a time flag. So it can either be school, normal, or special. Now, if you get to the point where you can't work out a process that doesn't have an input or an output, most likely you need to go back to the drawing board. As you can see here, I separate using rows the inputs and outputs for the process. So that's the first process, the detect time of day. The next is we need to detect whether the vehicle is speeding or not. So that's the name of the process. So you can see here, we have the output from the first process becomes the input for the second process. So now that we did know the time of day, that becomes an input. The second is we need to detect whether the vehicle is speeding or not. So that's gonna be measured in speed. Now there's different ways you can measure this. You can measure it through um, you know, how fast the vehicle goes from point A to point B. In this point, to keep it simple, we're just gonna say we're measuring the speed. The output is another flag to determine whether the vehicle is speeding or normal. And then in the third row for our third process, which is capture photo vehicle, what triggers that is whether the flag is considered speeding for the speed flag. Otherwise, the camera will just ignore the, not the vehicles um, conforming to the speed limit. As a result of this process, we have the following outputs. We have photo of vehicle, speed of vehicle, the date and time, and in the location of the, of the camera. And then finally, the last process we have is the store vehicle details. So what we need for that is we need the photo of the vehicle, the speed of the vehicle, date and time, and the location of the camera. Now in terms of the registration on the vehicle, we're assuming that's going to be taken from the photo of the vehicle. And then the output in this case here is that we are storing those details um, for future transmission or for someone to pick up. Now, you may find IPO diagrams initially intimidating. If you are stuck with starting your IPO diagram, my suggestion is that you list all your inputs down in one column, and if possible, all your outputs. Then what you need to do is you need to go through and identify what input has a relationship with what output. Now remember, all process is, is something that converts an input into an output. If you've got any questions, let me know. Otherwise, attached to this YouTube video, I have a worksheet, and I strongly recommend that you work on the ATM example and the supermarket self-checkout machine example. Please let me know if you have any questions.